Hello everyone, welcome to this month's Reef Health Update. As we always report on in October, we've conducted um, a number of surveys out there, something like 470 surveys. Not surprisingly, given that we're um, outside of the summer months, those actually do documented some limited coral bleaching, but it's probably a legacy of what's happened earlier in the year. Sea temperatures actually across the reef are about half a degree above the long-term averages. Again, not at the levels we'd expect to see coral bleaching at impacts, but nevertheless, those elevated temperatures will have a effects upon the flora and fauna that make up the Great Barrier Reef. Um, we had slightly below average rainfall across Queensland um, and low chances of extreme rainfall in November uh, coming based upon the Bureau's forecasts. Um, the actual large scale climate patterns in terms of the El Nino Southern Oscillation are currently we're on uh, La Nina watch um, and it's not certain as to whether that would develop into a La Nina event but overall the Bureau have actually forecast that we're likely to see a quite active um, cyclone season potentially in northern Australia so we'll be keeping a close eye both upon temperatures and the emerging weather patterns as those unfold over the coming months. In water surveys also showed sort of the ongoing effects of the um, coral bleaching event that happened earlier on this year in terms of some of the legacy of coral mortality. Um, the surveys also showed us that crown of thorn starfish activity continues in the southern end of the marine park and actually to some extent in the northern part of the park and the teams of control divers are actually focusing upon those key areas. Again this is really important, it's why we gather this information through the year so we can target our management e efforts to offset some of of the um, pressures that have come about as a result of the coral bleaching earlier in, uh, early in the year. So our partners at the Bureau of Meteorology and the CSIRO have released their State of the Climate report for 2024. And some really interesting um, insights within that report. It's really showing that we've seen over the last couple of decades increasing temperatures, changes in ocean chemistry, as well as increases in ocean heat content. That's not surprising given the documented evidence of climate change. Uh, it's important to have this information summarised in one place. What it tells us is that um, temperatures have risen by about 1.1 degrees in the ocean since 1900 and obviously that has consequences um, right the way through to the Great Barrier Reef, particularly because many of the organisms that we know and care about are actually temperature sensitive. Now while these combined results aren't surprising given the long-term science that actually tells us about what's going on on the reef and actually in the world's oceans and uh, as a result of climate change, it is really important to put into focus the management actions that we put in place on a day-to-day -day basis, um, basically to make sure that we can support the resilience of the reef as these changes continue to occur. So things like our compliance programs, making sure that people are doing the right thing um, in terms of where they are and the activity they undertake in the marine park, but also the Crown of Thorn Starfish Control Program. Those, the combined effects of those, along with many of the other stewardship initiatives, are crucial in terms of protecting the resilience of the reef as the climate changes. So we've also been really busy working with many of our partners, including the tourism industry lately. We've just conducted another round of Eye on the Reef training that many of you may well be aware of is a program that um, has many, many participants get involved, get in the water and actually understand what they're seeing out there, but also to record changes they may see. The tourism industry are pivotal to, our, uh, to that program and its delivery. And we regularly work with them to train people to make sure that they're able to use the survey methods that are involved in Eye on the Reef. We've also been working with the Master Reef Guides program that actually makes sure that the interpretation of the reef is actually standardised and that people get to know and understand that given that the, the many, many visitors that come to the Great Barrier Reef each year. And this has been running for several years now and there's another cohort of trainees that will go through that Master Reef Guide program in the coming weeks. We're also, on a positive note, right in the middle of the spawning season for coral reefs right now, which is actually an incredibly important time because it's when the corals have actually built up their bundles of eggs and sperm, put them up into the water column, and then that, whilst those bundles of eggs and sperm are then fertilised, they produce baby corals that then swim down onto the reefs and actually start the next generation of corals. It's a really important time, both in terms of it's amazing to see, but also as a period of renewal for the reef, particularly important as we see more of the pressures uh, that affect the reef as a result of a changing climate. 
with summer approaching, we'll be gearing up our efforts to understand what's going on out in the reef. We're out there um, actually making sure we understand what's going on um, every day of the year. Um, and we look forward to receiving your reports from things like the Eye on the Reef app that, uh, to supplement that information. Thanks for your attention. Look forward to bringing you the next Reef Health Update next month.